Hello everybody, welcome to my Vimeo library. This video is about mobility in the thoracic spine, which is a very useful thing to have when you want to develop more responsiveness for balancing in a handstand and also the, the upper body and the, the, the thoracic spine in particular can get very tight when we do lots of strength-based exercises. <laughs> So thoracic spine mobility basically means that you can do this and this with your rib cage, not just with your shoulders. So it means that there's a certain amount of flexibility and give in the rib cage and the upper body and in the top part of your spine. And that's very important for handstands because if you can do that, you are able to balance well because... Um, for, in order to balance, you need that responsiveness in the body, right? Because balancing doesn't just happen in the hands ex exclusively and it doesn't mean that you're just like a stick that's there, but you kind of have to have this responsiveness in the shoulders. So let's start with my favorite exercise um, of all times, um, isolated shoulder rolls, really rolling the shoulders front as much as possible up, back and down as much as you can, really creating maximum um, circles in your shoulders. Um, I really like this exercise. It's like my favorite warm-up exercise because it, it, you can get so many muscle groups going here in the upper body and really feel the shoulder blades moving up and down on your back. And let's go to the front and really Pull your shoulders up to your ears, push them front, down, creating big circles and really feeling how you can expand your range in the shoulders here even more. So try it one more time to create even bigger circles. Let's do the same thing with straight arms. Creating a bigger reach here in the back, really reach behind you while you keep your stomach, your core pulled in towards your spine to um, make sure your ribs don't flare too much. But here in this one, because it's about thoracic spine mobility, you can open the rib cage a little bit more than usual. And to the front, big circles just to get the movement in the shoulder line going a bit all right. Okay, um, open and close is my second favorite warm-up exercise. You bend the knees and you try to curve, create a curve from the center of your rib cage here, just where your sternum is. This is where the curve goes and then you open into a diagonal. So, Make sure that when you go front, your shoulders also push front so that you really curve here in, in the top of your rib cage. So um, if you've got a mirror, just uh, put yourself in front of the mirror and make sure that you're not curving here or that you're not pushing your hips back um, because sometimes we think that we're curving here, but it all happens in the lower back. So imagine this all happens from the center of your rib cage. So someone's pushing you in here and then someone's pulling your sternum out to expand like this. So the focus of the action is in the center of your rib cage. Make sure that you bring your arms into a diagonal here as well and really reach behind with the fingers. Let's do this for 10 and 1 and two and three as you curve bend the knees as well and four and five six seven eight nine and Ten. Now one time, take hold of your left wrist with your right hand and bend the knees, push to the front as much as you can with your shoulders, really curve your upper back. Then you straighten the knees and you pull your arm diagonally here to the front. 
creating a stretch all along the left side of your spine here. And then come back to the middle, bend the knees, change the grip. Left hand takes hold of the right wrist. Curve as much as you can, push the shoulders to the front. Then bend, then straighten both legs and pull the arm across to the left, creating a stretch alongside the right side of your back. Really allow the shoulder to come to the front, to come out of, it uh, kind of feels like it's coming out of the socket, it's not really coming out of the socket. But it really feels like I'm pulling my shoulder to the front. Okay, and gently come out of the stretch. Uh, interlace the fingers here in front and stretch the hands up. Really elevate the shoulders as much as you can. Step the legs into a, um, a medium wide straddle position here. And now lift up even more and tilt the upper body to the side. Then you bend the knees. You stay really in a in a very flat sideways position and then as you've bent the knees you curl the upper back to bring the arms to the front creating that the same curve as we did in the opening and closing exercise and then we come around to the other side really into a very um, flat on sideways position and then you straighten the legs at the same time as you stretch up. So. One more time, stretch up as much as you can, sideways position, really feeling that side stretch in the upper back and in the lower back as well. Bend the knees, bring the arms to the front, create that curve in the upper body, the same curve as in the opening and closing exercise. Come around to the other side, stretch the knees and stretch the hands up. Let's do this six more times. So bend to the side and bend the knees. Come round to the center, to the side, and up. Stretch up, side, bend, really curve, come up. And four more, stretch up, side, bend. Come round to the front, side, and up. Stretch up, side, round and to the other side up two more stretch up one more time elbows really straight and side bend curve across the front and up one more time up side curve across the front okay release the arms relax for a second and then um get a towel or a stick of any kind, I have my um, grandfather's old walking stick here. And you take hold of your empty water bottle or towel or stick. Um, take it above the head and we'll do the same exercise again, basically. But this time, when you do it with um, the hands shoulder width apart, you really have to uh, make sure that your core is engaged and you're really pulling the front of the stomach in towards the spine to stabilize the lower back. So again, lift up, side, curve, really create that curve here in the spine and bring it back up. Lift, side, Curve across the front, side, up, and lift, side, curve across the front, side, and up, lift, side, curve across the front, and up, and two more times, lift, side, curve across the front, and up, lift, side, curve across the front, and lift back up. Now stay here with me and we'll try something very exciting. We're gonna lift the sternum up towards the ceiling without moving anything in the rest of the body. So it means that you're gonna lift this part here, this part center of the rib cage. you're gonna try and imagine you have a light shining here 
in the center of your chest and that light's not going to shine front, but it's going to change the direction of the beam up towards the ceiling. So it's kind of like you're lifting your rib cage up and um, your arms are going to stay above you and the arms are going to also reach up towards the ceiling and they're slightly going to go back. So let's do this together. Push the shoulders up and shine that light in the center of your chest up towards the ceiling, keeping the stomach pulled in just this and come back. Let's do this five more times. Pull the stomach in towards the spine, elevate the shoulders, shine the light at the center of the chest up towards the ceiling and come back. And again, lift the sternum up towards the ceiling and come back three more times. Lift your sternum, elevate the shoulders, reach the hands up and come back. And lift, lift the sternum up to the ceiling and come back one more time. Shine that light up towards the ceiling and come back. Great. Okay, cool. Uh, put your towel or stick away. And um, now meet me here on the floor in a four-point position. We are going to do the classic cat-cow curve and um, open uh, of the spine movement, which I'm sure you know, in case you don't. Focus on the dome here in the upper body, this doming effect. And here you really try and release the sternum down towards the floor. So many of you may know cat cow as just sort of bringing, focusing on the belly going up and down. But in this cat cow exercise, we are going to focus on the on the um, sternum and the center of the chest because this is all about mobility in the rib cage and the top part of the spine. So focus again on when I said you have this light at the center of your rib cage. Focus on that light dropping down and being pushed back up. That is the main thing here. So let's do this together. Drop the sternum down and create the dome, doming cat back and drop and bring it back up. Let's do this for six more times and drop. You can bend the elbows here a little bit and bring it back up and drop and bring it back up. Really focus on your rib cage dropping down low rather than your belly button and up. Now, Next, we are going to circle the rib cage. And here again, focus on your ribs circling. So if that helps you as an image, then imagine you have kind of like a flat surface here attached to your ribs and that surface is moving in a circle. So we're gonna, so it's lifting up and then pushing it right down, left and up. So creating a full circle here um, and Feel free to bend the elbows a bit to accommodate for the extra movement in your arms. And now if you've figured out this movement, see if you can add the head and the neck as an extension of your spine. The head and the neck are part of your spine and they should be part of this movement. And a couple of more times and then let's change direction. Really pushing up into the dome, dropping low and going left and right as much as you can. Okay, great. Now come back up to standing and let's circle. Let's do a circular movement here in the rib cage that I also like very much. So imagine again, I really like to work with the directions of the body to like um, you know, create more awareness. So, so imagine you have like two headlights here on your hips and those headlights are always facing front. However, your upper body is going to move from side to side. So fix the lower body and then you'll move the shoulders to the side create a big circle in the arms, here with the arms, and then I'll bring my arms close to my ribs, 
to go across to the other side. So this is what the movement looks like. It's kind of quite intuitive once you get it. It's arms long, arms close to you. Arms long, arms close to you. That's all it is while the lower part of your body stays fixed to the front headlights, hips facing front. So let's go one direction. Arms long, close to your body. Arms long, close to your body. Now you can follow your eyes with um, your hands with your eyes <laughs> if you figured out the movement long close to you long close to you long and close to you let's go the other direction long close to you long close to you long close to you and arm stretched out close to you two more times and long and close to you. Okay, great. So you should already start to feel a little bit of warmth in the upper body as we are moving it from side to side and in all directions to really um, get the movement going in this top part of the body. Um, but don't worry if uh, you don't because this kind of stuff takes time and needs to be repeated uh, quite a lot. So now meet me here on the floor. Uh, legs stretched out. Now, if you um, if this isn't available to you in terms of hamstring flexibility, then you may have to do this exercise um, sort of in a mini version. But try and sort of execute the idea of it still. So I'll show you once this is what it's going to look like. It's like a wave in your upper body. In fact, it's a wave across the whole spine, but it's initiated by the upper body. So again, it's like someone is pulling you here from the rib cage to the front and then pushes you back and front and back. And make sure that every part of your spine, including the neck, is part of this wave. Because this is as much about um, creating extra mobility as it is about finding the right amount of release. So if this kind of, if, if, if in this movement you find that there are parts that are feel a bit like a bumpy road, then those are the parts that you need to find a release in. So it may be that when you get here you feel a bit stuck. So then maybe your lower back needs to find a release to allow for the chest to come forward more. You can have the hands here on your legs. You can also uh, create like a swimming um, movement with the arms on the side. Um, this does help some people to execute the movement better because it is a little bit like swimming. So let's do this together for 10. Chest front and pushing back and two and three and four and five and six and seven and eight and nine and ten. Fantastic. So if you needed to have the arms here behind you, then maybe the wave uh, just looks like this. And um, that's totally okay to begin with. Now, let's come back to the four-point position here. And um, we'll do a uh, round back and then come low with the shoulders and we'll alternate this. So as you come up from this child's position, you already curve the upper back to come into kind of like, so I've got my knees a little bit further uh, back than in a normal four-point position. So um, I suggest that you start it off with your child's position here, arms stretched out, and then you initiate the movement with the upper back here already, pressing the hands into the floor and then doming into your back to come quite far front and then push everything back down, release the shoulders to the floor and initiate the movement from your ribs, push into a round back and bring the shoulders down towards the floor. Let's do this eight more times. 
curve up, release for one, and curve up, and release for two, and curve, and release for three, curve, release, curve, release, Curve, release, and curve, release. Okay, so um, what I should have said before the exercise, if this is hard on your knees, um, please feel free to put a towel underneath your knees or something similar. So let us do um, the same thing with the wall so you're going to push into the wall here and then come to a curve in the back and then release the shoulders down towards the wall again so it really is that movement releasing low and then curving back and the focus again is on the upper back here um, just figure this movement out for yourself once and then we'll do 10 of them together releasing towards the wall and then curving um, and you choose where you want to have your focus whether you want to look at the wall or whether you want to look at the floor um, I'm not too bothered about that um, but you should keep a push here uh, into the wall and active arms and elbows straight so let's release the shoulders down to the floor and come into a curve and release and curve for two release and curve for three release curve release curve release curve four more release focus on your chest opening and curve release and curve and release and curve and one more release and curve to finish this off we will do a relaxation exercise that focuses on release because again like with all issues of of mobility and flexibility you always have to find the right amount of release passive flexibility and active flexibility. So this next exercise, is fo exercise focuses on the release aspect. You can do this exercise on a roller, but I really recommend that if your shoulder flexibility and upper body mobility is not um, amazing yet, then I suggest you start off with a gentle elevation because we are going to stay in this position for three minutes and position your elevation right behind your shoulder blades. That's a lot further up than you may think. It may feel that it's like it's already kind of like on your shoulder line, but if you find your shoulder blades here with your hands, you find them and your elevation should be, you sh should be on the, um, you should have <laughs> your shoulder blades on your elevation. Uh, you shouldn't have the elevation further down. Stretch the arms up. If you find it hard to, to keep the arms up there, you can take a roller or a, or a weight to keep them there in place. And I suggest that you keep your uh, knees bent here because that helps you to push your lower back to the floor because your lower back should be touching the floor. And this is about finding release in, in the upper back. So keep a gentle pull in towards, so gently keep your stomach pulled in towards your spine. And let's stay here together for three minutes, breathing in, trying to find release in the chest and in the upper body to open up the top part of the spine more and opening up the chest as well. And with every out breath, imagine that you are melting into the mat that you are melting over your chosen elevation and with every in-breath your chest and your ribcage is expanding 
and with every out breath it melts into the floor. If you have to adjust the position slightly, please do. Make sure you're not sliding up on your elevation and keep your lower back somewhat close to the ground. Breathe in, allow your chest to expand and breathe out, melt into the mat. Breathe in and melt into the mat. And one more time, breathe in. Allow the ribcage to expand and melt into the mat. Adjust the shoulders slightly if you need to, but make sure that you keep your elbows straight and the lower back close to the ground, close to the ground. And work with your breath and now after a minute has passed you may find that you notice points in your back and in your spine that are holding on and that are really um, gripping. And see if you can find a release in those points. So imagine that that part that you feel like is very tight, you imagine that part melts into the floor with every out breath. And again, if you need to adjust your position slightly, please do. Let's hold it here for another minute. Breathing in, allowing the chest to expand and breathing out, melting everything into the mat. Keep your elbows straight. Make sure your lower back is still close to the ground and hasn't lifted up yet. And every in-breath makes the chest expand and every out-breath makes it melt, makes everything melt to the ground. And a couple more seconds here. Okay. And gently come out of the position. Wiggle your arms around the side. And then if you want to just roll over your side to come up. Um, this stretch can feel very intense if you aren't used to it. Um, so I have now just used the rolled up yoga mat and in time you can see if you can make the elevation a little bit higher. You may even want to try it on the roller. Um, but I like to start this off very low because it can be it's a very intense stretch. You could hold this even longer by yourself. Um, and it's a wonderful opener for the upper body and the thoracic spine. I would say like that this stretch, apart from all the other stuff we did before this, is one of the most important stretches in this routine. If you can do this chest opener every day at the end of your training, over time you will really find um, that sense of release that sometimes can really take a long time to 
um, find itself into the body, especially if you've been used to doing a lot of maximum strength training and you're used to only experiencing your body as strong and hard, finding this release um, can really take a while. It's a very different sensation from how we usually work with the body. But if we want to do a handstands or more acrobatic and demanding stuff, we really need to find the right balance between strength and release. It is the key element to moving efficiently. If you see gymnasts doing their tumbling routine, for example, uh, you see there, what you see there is a perfect balance between explosiveness, explosiveness and release. And um, that's kind of what we're trying to find. Um, the moments in the body where you need to give and the moments where you need to take. So thank you very much for spending this uh, half hour with me and see you in the next video.